For today's story, we turn our attention to the city of Detroit, which has joined other cities in banning cashless establishments. Some businesses don't like cash, and they prefer credit. There's a lot of advantages to credit. It has a transactional rate that's trackable, traceable. It allows everything to be audited, prevents stealing of cash, prevents you know problems from stealing from the till and all other issues. But of course, not everyone has credit cards, particularly those who are not financially secure might not have credit cards. So this is a problem because some people can't necessarily shop at some businesses, and some cities are doing things about this by making it illegal for those businesses to not accept cash. So let's learn a little bit more about this Detroit law and what's going on. Let's learn more about this. The city council voted to prohibit Detroit businesses from rejecting cash payments through a city ordinance that includes a misdemeanor penalty for establishments that don't accept dollar bills or change. The new ordinance appears to apply to Detroit's largest sport venues, including Little Caesars Arena, Commerce Saw Park, and Ford Field, which all have vendors that only accept credit or electronic payment. Those venues could not be reached immediately for comment. The cashless business ban ordinance was sponsored by a district member. The law requires all city businesses to accept cash for payments of food, drink, good, and services that will go into effect in 90 days. Unclear from the description if this will affect all kinds of services or not. There are some services for which cash may not necessarily be appropriate, but presumably this would apply at least to like corner stores and things that the average consumer might just walk into and sort of a, a street business, as you might say. So presumably those kinds of businesses, but unclear how far it extends. The person who sponsored it says that she pursued the ban after she had to abandon a salad and a Detroit area building steps from City Hall because they only accepted credit cards. The ordinance is still except cash. This will more, help more than 100,000 unbanked Detroiters. This ordinance is one step in helping the unbanked become fully members of the local economy and no Detroiter will be left behind. So the city council person does not apparently have a credit card or was unwilling to use one for whatever reason. She's like, you know, cash is good for all debts. And so they should accept cash. So, you know, there you go. More than a dozen public commenters spoke in support of requiring businesses to accept cash for payment. Businesses eliminating cash transactions creates a new line of discrimination based on race and class. Our constitutional rights include the right of any person on the U.S. to use our currency. We need to defend that. I'm not sure it's necessarily a constitutional right. The government of the United States certainly has the right to print money and coinage, but I'm not sure it necessarily flows from that. It's a constitutional right to use that in a private business, but okay. I mean, presumably the United States could pass a law using their authority, but they haven't done that. Under the new ordinance, businesses can have kiosks but must have the option to accept cash without a minimum purchase amount, which is also true of credit card transactions. Because of credit card fees that come into them, businesses sometimes require a minimum threshold to accept credit cards because they don't want to pay the credit card transaction costs on low transaction amounts. Many occupations still center largely around cash, including those in the service industry and people who get cash tips. Even budding legal marijuana businesses is cash-based because of difficulty with banking, considering that pot is still illegal on the federal level. So yeah, the marijuana business is particularly interesting here because as many states and localities have legalized marijuana, marijuana, of course, remains illegal on the federal level. And banks are mostly controlled by the federal government, as you would expect. So it is very difficult for marijuana businesses to find banks that will accept their money because they're in, they're concerned about being in violation of federal law because it's the instrumentalities relating to criminal offenses. It's the proceeds from crime, and it's knowingly accepting proceeds of crime. And that's a real problem if you're a regulated bank. So a lot of marijuana businesses run in all cash and just have cash on hand or other similar arrangements. It's a weird time out there for the marijuana businesses in relation to all that. In southwest Detroit, the Coney Island venue remains cash-only restaurant five years after in Detroit, Detroit started accepting credit card payments. There's no federal law requiring business, private businesses to accept cash, but Detroit joins Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts in banning 
cashless businesses. So this has been something that has been percolating in both major cities and some states requiring the acceptance of cash, which seems fine. Some people can't get credit cards. Some people don't want credit cards. Some people don't want the transactional tracing of credit cards are paranoid about big bank or whatever, and they should have the right to engage in our society too. Moots Pizza Rare and Bar opened on Liberty Street in downtown Detroit in 2019 as a cashless business, but within six months changed its policy following a column by a restaurant critic that pointed out that while cashless business has become a trend that spiked during COVID-19, some customers would be left out. So yes, uh, during COVID, when a lot more businesses were acting arm's length, there was definitely fewer cash transactions. And there are some conveniences in going all credit, some disadvantages, but you know, it does leave some people out. It still makes sense because 95% of our business is credit card and 5% is more work on our business. Bouncing drawers every night and sometimes people are not always honest. Kashos was way more efficient, quick, and always accurate. However, it was unpopular and we have to accommodate our residents. They say the change was made because the eatery didn't want to lose any business and mainly receives cash as people buy pizza by the slice. I do miss the good pizza by the slice establishments. One of the nice things about living in these same, there were plenty of places with pizza by the dollar or not necessarily a dollar, but sometimes close. And it wasn't necessarily good pizza, but it was a lot of pizza and it was filling in the late night. So I do kind of miss that. I'll just say that I was, re I'll just say that it was really easy checking out restaurants at night. We didn't even have a safe, but at the same time, having cash is the right thing to do. I personally didn't like it when I went to commercial park recently and didn't have my credit card and couldn't buy anything. Fair. The city's law department said Tuesday they'll be issuing warnings and businesses owners who do not comply. They could face a misdemeanor charge, which would carry a $500 fine. The misdemeanors would be issued to the business itself, not workers. Home-based businesses are not included in the establishment definitions. The city council was concerned about small businesses and adding a waiting period for when enforcement would take place. There's no teeth here, so if we go back to COVID, we need this ordinance to be suspended to accommodate public health. Whitfield Calway say 90% of Detroit businesses already comply with the issue. I don't foresee it being a problem. Plum Market is willing to be in compliance. There are locations even at the airport except cash. It's just a phenomena in Detroit. Thus, that brings us to the end of this story about Detroit joining a growing list of places that require cash for many kinds of businesses because some people can't get credit cards. Some people don't want credit cards. And so some people are being squeezed out of various things. There's even religious people who have problems with credit cards because some people, religious people consider it to be the mark of the beast if you're particularly hardcore about such things. So they are looking at this and saying, look, people want cash for all kinds of reasons. There's lots of people who deal in cash, lots of people who get cash, and cash should be a thing. So Detroit has joined other cities in requiring that their businesses also deal in cash. And that, for the moment, brings us to the end of the discussion of this story.